Hi everyone, this is GKCS. In this video, we'll be talking about stored procedures. Stored procedures are very similar to APIs or functions which are stored inside the database, hence the name. Uh, the idea is that you can have inputs that are passed into these functions and you get outputs from these functions. It's not important to think about what language this function uses. Usually it's in SQL, but you can define stored procedures using Java, using Python, using Golang. Uh, all of this is dependent on the database itself. Also, who does the compiling of this function? Who executes this function? The database, always. Okay, there are certain benefits of stored procedures as we'll see and there are certain drawbacks. Some things to keep in mind though are that the person who's calling this function is usually a server. You don't have a client calling a database function directly, just like you don't have clients directly manipulating data in a database. The second thing is that how do you pass this API call? Between the server and the database, there's usually a special client that is a small piece of software um, running on the server, which tends to talk to the database. This is the place where you define what kind of query you're going to run. For example, if you're saying select star from profiles, that's a query which has to be sent to the database and then the results have to be returned. A stored procedure is very similar. In this, you'll say, let's say get profiles and which kind of profile should this user be able to see? So user ID will be the input and the output will be all of the profiles that I should be able to see. So when are stored procedures actually useful? Now, let me share with you a real world example. This is way back in 2015. One of my friends was trying to build an app uh, for personal loans. And the idea was that you might have run out of, <laughs> you might have run out of your close relatives and everyone, but relatives of your relatives may still be willing to give you a loan. So as crazy as the idea sounds, the basic idea is very simple. You have a set of friends, a set of people who you know. So they are your connections, first level connections. And then there are second level connections who are the connections of your connections. So one transitive relationship. Uh, the idea here is that if you can find that larger circle of friends of friends, then you can suggest a loan to be given to you. But the problem was that when they were trying to run this query, it was taking too long. It was taking, I think, uh, about an hour or something in their in their database so they came to me and they asked me for an algorithmic optimization uh, and this is what i suggested to them eventually so they had a server and the server was getting this request of get friends of friends uh, with a user id uh, then they were making a query to the database to find all the friends of this user id this is the original user let's say me now that was returning a response of three friends, friend one, friend two, friend three. And then what is happening is iteratively, we were going over the friend list and getting the friends of each friend who's a direct connection. So what's happening now is the second order response is going to come back. And this is happening, let's say for one person, one person had around 50 or 60 friends. Uh, you would be running this 50 or 60 times. Finally, when all the friends were together, uh, they were put into a single set. And then after, you know, removing duplicates and putting them in a sorted order, there would be a response. But the response, as you know, was taking very long. It was about one hour. So my first suggestion to them was to use a optimized algorithm for this. Uh, this is a graph and the graph has a set of nodes. You are basically trying to do two traversals. So I suggested to them to have a bi-directional breadth first search. Uh, here you have nodes on each side, friends and friends trying to connect with each other. Uh, instead of an order n square query, this becomes an order n query. This is all theory though, because in practice, it didn't change the runtime. The runtime was still one hour. And that made me feel a lot of surprise. Like I, I was like, what? It's still as slow as ever. Uh, I asked them the size of their inputs. The size of the inputs were very small. It shouldn't really have mattered. Everything should have happened in one second. I think the number was something like 10,000 or, or 1 lakh, which is 10 raised to the power 5. So BFS should have worked. It didn't work. That's when I suggested that, hey, why don't you just cache the results? This was super effective. It worked out really well. Uh, there was a happy path where you would just query for your friends of friends as a user, and you would get a response in a second. So their average response time actually went down to less than a few minutes. Uh, the only problem though was server restarts. Whenever there was a server restart, we used to have a cache miss because the cache would get evicted and we would have to fetch from the database. Uh, again, that would take about an hour to respond. Uh, and one of the solutions was in the night at two o'clock every night, we can just restart the server. Any kind of deployment will be done late in the night. Any kind of cache refreshing will be done late in the night. That is their idea. 
the other problem uh, which is over here is that if your server crashes then if it's an unexpected crash then you have no choice you have to go to the database and put the entries my suggestion here was to use a global cache that the cache does not get scrubbed out but this also didn't feel good because you didn't have fast updates in this cache one of my friends at this point said that hey instead of a global cache why don't you have a in memory database itself so it's like a cache after all uh, and that's when it struck us something is terribly wrong with around 10 days to about five entries if it's taking an hour to run a bfs that makes no sense even then hardware was enough to run 10 days to power 7 queries per second so here's when we started thinking finally and uh, we start tracing the problem so we started you know writing down sop ln statements uh, after pretty much every four or five lines of code uh, and we realized where the problem is occurring our first query to the database was get friends user id this would take about 1 second the response would give us friend 1 friend 2 friend 3 in fact we would have hundreds of friends for certain cases then we would make another query and this would take about 1 second to respond and then again and another second so what was happening is that we were making a cross continent call every time this query was being run we were hitting a database in the us and our server was in india the second problem was that we were making too many requests to this database the firewall found our activity to be pretty suspicious so it started blocking these many requests coming in suddenly from from one server in india uh, so it's strange i mean maybe the firewall didn't need to behave this way because it was a server uh, of the company but it happened however it's good because by making the run time so large obscenely large one hour it actually helped us focus on what is the core problem which is these many network calls and the idea came up then the stored procedures you know why don't we just run this entire algorithm of prep for search in a stored procedure so this will be a bunch of sql statements uh, you do a inner join on the friends table and you find your friends of friends that way then you return a response and everyone is happy this worked out this worked out really really well our customer was pretty happy uh, when they saw that we were able to give responses in a second they asked us not to implement the cache they wanted completely consistent responses sometimes when you're talking to people who are let's say not very techy and you tell them that hey sometimes the response may not be what is being reflected in the database they they instead tell you just simplify things don't tell me that sometimes things can go wrong and sometimes things will go right the moment i make a change in the database it should reflect in the front end and so this is the kind of solution they wanted no caching just stored procedures as you can see there are many benefits of using a stored procedure the first one is that there is a certain uniformity in performance uh, whenever you're saying get me the friends of friends it's always going to take you almost the same time uh, you don't have any set of heavy users who have millions of friends or you don't have light users who have just a few friends and so you optimize for each type of user no that's not necessary just run one query encapsulate all of that complexity all of that logic into a single stored procedure run that in the database get a response it's almost always going to take the same amount of time and the scaling also that has to be done is dependent on that single encapsulated operation not on a bunch of queries that different servers are making from different places okay uh, the second thing is that you don't need any external two phase commit to be done if you want the operations to run atomically many databases offer transaction support asset guarantees uh, so you can have atomic operations running and you can roll them back easily in the database itself you don't have to manage that through the application the third point again is very similar uh, consistency guarantees in an application are usually harder to enforce databases are specialized for this you can have read committed or serializable isolation in the database itself run the stored procedure everything will appear in the way that you want it to appear the fourth point is quite interesting you may have a strongly connected network of friends so each friend is a friend of everybody else uh, so if you have 50 people that would be roughly 2500 total results that you would get from the database after 50 queries but if you run the query in the database you're going to just get 50 results back because it removes the duplicates by itself and filters through things by itself so the network cost here is also lesser and finally number 5 of course is that you have fewer round trips uh, you just make one query instead of 50 queries this is probably the biggest benefit uh, and the most common reason why stored procedures are used
There are also certain drawbacks to stored procedures. The first one is that the application must know and also create a stored procedure. So either it's a database administrator, somebody with the permissions to go and create a stored procedure will go ahead and do that. And then you have an application engineer who's going to be calling that stored procedure. They can't really make easy changes to that database if it's, you know, if there are permissions behind the database or if they don't know how to go and change the language of the database, this is going to be a problem. The second thing is your application specific or business logic changes start moving into the database. So this is usually done by the application engineer who are going to write really bad code. It's going to be difficult for them to maintain the SQL standards that are set by the DBA or the DBA will say, okay, I will do it for you, but I'll do it after three days. So development time becomes uh, long. It's also hard to read these stored procedures for an application engineer. It's hard to debug for them because when they look at SQL instead of, you know, the language that they're comfortable with, it takes them more time. Also error responses get really difficult in an application. It's easy to identify where things went wrong and return the right error code with the, you know, error message. But in a DB, when things go wrong, uh, it could be anything you get SQL error codes. So those have to be mapped into application error codes and that is tedious. It's not easy to do. Uh, after a certain point in time, it starts getting tiring because you have to have this SQL doc next to you and the application doc, HTTP codes, SQL codes, and the mapping. And the absolute final point is that this is database specific. So some DBs will offer you Java support. Some DBs won't. If you change your DB, which is God forbid you don't, but if you change your DB, then you have to write those stored procedures again, right? While in an application, you just copy paste code. Um, in a DB, it's a little more tedious. So that's it for stored procedures. It's a very simple concept and it helps a lot in certain cases where you have multiple queries that you have to fire in the DB and there is some complex logic which you want to offload onto the database itself. Always try to cache things if you can before. Um, there may be a algorithmic optimization to be done, but in some cases it makes sense to reduce the number of network calls that you're making and just let the DB do the work. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.